In this video, we are going to learn how to apply Unreal Bloom Pass to a scene in order to add this kind of glowing effect to its components. Having said that, let's understand what is Unreal Bloom Pass before jumping into the code editor. Unreal Bloom Pass is one of the built-in passes that 3GS provides within its wide list of examples, its post-processing examples more precisely. Yes, I know, another strange term. Well, to put it simply, post-processing is just a fancy term of saying applying filters or effects to an image. So when you take a selfie using Instagram for example and apply a filter to it, you are actually doing some post-processing to your photo. Having said that, to apply post-processing to a scene in 3GS, we need to understand how it works first. In a normal 3GS app, I mean without post-processing, the renderer displays the scene directly on the screen. On the other hand, if there is some post-processing to do, we need to create a sort of a manager to a group of two passes or more before displaying the final scene, and that manager is referred to as the effect composer. The first pass represents the original colors of the scene, I mean zero filters applied, and it is referred to as the render pass. The rest of the passes represent the filters we want to apply to the scene, and bear in mind that the order in which we add the passes is so important. So if we set the render pass to be the last one, we won't be able to see any effect applied to the scene because we are displaying the base colors after applying the filters, which obviously doesn't make any sense. It's pretty much the same concept of layers on Photoshop. And now it's about time to type some code. The first thing we need to do is import the render pass and of course the effect composer. The next step we need to do is create an instance of the render pass and set the scene and the camera as arguments to the constructor. Then we need to create an instance of the effect composer and pass the render as an argument. Next we need to call add pass from the composer and add the render pass instance. Actually this is how we add filters and effects aka passes to the effect composer. And now we have to tweak our animate function. If you've been following my tutorials, you know that I don't use the classic request animation frame, which you've probably came across in a lot of the tutorials and examples on the web. However, when it comes to post processing, that's the method we have to use, because set animation loop isn't yet compatible with post processing, at least the time I recorded this video. So, what we are going to do here is call request animation frame comment out the set animation loop method and call the animate function. And then we don't call render from the render anymore, but do that from the composer instead. And now if we take a look you see that our scene is displayed but nothing has changed and that's because we still didn't yet add any pass to the effect composer except the render pass which as I said earlier it represents the base colors of our scene. So to apply the bloom filter we need to import a pass called Unreal Bloom Pass and create an instance of it. The first argument of the constructor method is a vector2 which represents the resolution of the scene. The second argument is the intensity of the effect. The third one represents the radius of the bloom. And the last one determines which pixels emit the bloom. This one actually requires you to experiment with to better understand what it does. Next, we need to add the pass to the composer, and that's it. And now, as you can see, the colors of our model look glowing. That being said, we can tweak the colors and the overall look of the effect by using different kind of tone mapping algorithms and different exposure values. In case you don't know what is tone mapping, I made a tutorial in which I explained in detail what it is, so I highly suggest you watch it. Now the colors look a bit less glowing and the effect looks overall better.
The possibilities are actually endless with the properties and tone mapping algorithms, so let's try a different set of values. So here we'll update the values of the bloom pass using the setters instead of the constructor, because why not? And let's also use another tone mapping algorithm. And there we go. With that done, we come to the end of this tutorial, so make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.